And a fake tan as well. Oh my God, a spray tan. <laughs> a spray tan and bright pink toenail. Hello and welcome to this new podcast, The Guest. Each of these episodes will feature a different guest in conversation with someone that really knows them. We are recording this episode after dinner with our friends who have stayed on to listen to tonight's chat. To introduce myself first, I'm Cora Delaney, founder of EYC Limited, a creative agency built for the new era of brand and talent management. And this evening, I'm speaking to my longtime friend and client, Leo Mandela, aka Gully Guy Leo. <laughs> I added that bit in myself. <laughs> I met Leo five years ago when he was 14 years old and already had a huge character that was contagious. We were immediately friends. I saw the potential in where he could go in his career, so we decided to work together. He's been my client and close friend ever since. Welcome to the guest podcast, Leo Mandela. Thanks for having me. Thank you. <laughs> for those who don't know your journey, tell us your story. If it was a book, what would the chapters be? Wow, wow, wow. Um, it all begins when I was 13, just turned 13. And I remember I started seeing people wearing like Supreme and just cool clothes, really. And I've always been a bit of a weirdo. Like, I used to have a Moshi Monsters YouTube channel when I was about nine where I'd review like little figures um, on YouTube. <laughs> also going to um, waiting outside people's hotels. <laughs> you are. <laughs> okay, okay, let me write it. Now you've said it, I mean, as I said, I used to, no one really knows this. It's very, very weird. When I was about 11, me and my best friend Jackson would do something called stalking, where you'd, <laughs> where you'd camp outside celebrities' hotels in the hope to meet them. <laughs> Say who it was, so the first person I did was Ollie Mars. <laughs> <laughs> um, and I remember I waited nine hours in, the, in a sleeping bag with Jackson and he walked past him and like that. I was like, cool. <laughs> I was like, Thank you. <laughs> the next person was Nicki Minaj. Um, and I remember when I, we, we thought we knew where she was staying and obviously... I was so oblivious to what celebrities do, but they have like decoys and stuff so people can't follow them. Anyway, I was sat in a bar and I was just having you a sat drink. sat at a bar? I was, well, not in a bar. Like I was sat at like, I was 11, I was having a Coke. Okay. And, this, <laughs> and like, this, like this woman comes in and I'm like, that's Nicki Minaj, that's Nicki Minaj. And it's on, she's on her own, so obviously it wasn't. Um, and that was like 14 hours. I remember I waited from like 4 a.m. and I didn't even, didn't even see her. Um, at what point do you decide, <laughs> at what point do you decide to just call it a day? My, my mum texted me like, where are you? <laughs> She's like, it's late now, come home. Um, but yeah, that was, uh, <laughs> I wasn't going to bring that up, but thanks, Cora. Um, so that was about 11. And I realised that is not something I can do for the rest of my life. So I was like, I need to do something now. Um, so yeah, I started seeing people wearing a lot of Supreme. And then I think, I, I remember I just went down to London one day when Supreme, because obviously before, like this day and age when Supreme had, doesn't have the kind of hype because they stopped like camping and stuff. When I went down and there was like a, two day queue for like the first drop. I think it was full winter 15. I wore this like butterfly tracksuit and it just went everywhere on Instagram and then people started following me. I think it was because I was literally a 13 year old and people were like, how does this kid have money? And obviously people presume it's like mummy's money, but I just kind of resold a lot of clothes. Um, so yeah, started wearing this. <laughs> Still laughing at me camping to meet Ollie Murr. <laughs> so the, pic the picture of you and Joey Essex on your mother. Oh my God. <laughs> <laughs> And this one's even worse, but people know this. I was obsessed with Joey Essex. <laughs> like, I, I fancied him, yeah, but obviously I didn't know that. Uh, <laughs> so, um, and then I, yeah, I, have a, I had a picture of uh, me and Joey Essex framed on my mantelpiece. And my mum was like, we're taking that down at Christmas. I was like, no, we're not. <laughs> like Christmas decorations and just like this like horrible frame as well. Have you seen yeah, it? It's like ancient. I've got the picture saved like many times on my phone. <laughs> um, so yeah, did a lot of things before I kind of made it to a uh, fashion world. And then kind of just kept going back on Thursdays, skipping school, which was naughty, but worked there, didn't it? Yeah, naughty, naughty. Um, Wait, Sarah, how did you, did your school not say, why yeah, are you never I, here on a Thursday? I used to say to my, my mum, I was like, Sarah, like, I need to, I need Sarah. to, <laughs> she'd be like, Sarah, please, one more Thursday off. And she was like, no. I was like, I promise it'll be worth it. And school were like, this is a weird, unusual pattern of a kid missing every Thursday for like literally two months. And every Thursday, a new picture would come out of me on Instagram. Like, that was from the weekend. <laughs> Obviously not. Um, so yeah, 
kept going down, then gained a little following. And I didn't really do it, like I didn't even know you can make money off it at all. Or like it was a profit, like, you know what I'm saying? Like it could be a job, I literally was just wearing clothes. And you, well, you all know what I looked like. I was a very unusual looking kid, like four foot nothing and like no eyebrows and never took, took my beanie off. <laughs> People saw like I had no hair and stuff. Um, so yeah, kept going down to London, blah, blah, blah. And then met Cora and kind of where it took off. The rest is history, yeah, maybe. Yeah, exactly. Um, what was your defining moment? Oof. From in your career, I'd say maybe when we went to LA and South Korea. Yeah, that yeah, That kind yeah. of like cemented. Because I used to think that defining moment was like getting likes every week. But when I kind of realised what you can do, that wasn't the case at all because we, it was like the first paid job I ever got and it was to LA and I'd never been abroad till I was like 15, 14. Wait, that was your first time ever abroad, wasn't yeah, yeah, it, yeah. working? ever. Ever. And when, they, when Cora was like, yeah, we're going to LA, and I was like, cool. I was thinking, like, how much a flight? Like, how much for the job? And then she was like, no, everything's paid for, and this is what you're getting. I was like, what is going on? And I think, to be honest, I think that is true. I was like, this is actually a thing now. And then, like, two days later, we landed, and she was like, we're going to South Korea in a few days. And I was like, okay. <laughs> Bloody hell. And then we literally were just on holiday for the next three years. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you're doing the most stupid stuff. Literally. Literally. Um, what's your thoughts on influencer industry today? I think it's a lot different to what it was so when you first started. So much different. There's just so many influencers now because, like we we always say, like I think my I took off because I was like a niche. No one was doing it. If you think about it, like it just wasn't a thing. Buying clothes and taking photos like it. I don't it was, think anyone at your age was yeah, doing yeah, yeah. it. People were like taking that. photos in the clothes, but nothing really serious. You know what I mean? And then nowadays there is just like every man and his dog is an influencer. It's not a bad thing, but it's just like so much more competition, so many more like people doing one thing. Do you know what I'm saying? So if there's like a new outfit comes out, there's 20, 17 year olds wearing it. But before- 20, when I was there, Not 20, that, but like, think, yeah, like, 20, you know what I mean? Like, 20, <laughs> <laughs> well, like a, bun a lot more than, but if it, back in when I was doing it, it was literally just me and a couple others. Do you know what I mean? And I think that's what it was. So it has changed a lot, but not for the worse, but just a lot more. Competition. <laughs> what do you what do you think about the word influencer? I don't hate it. I don't understand why everyone's beef is with it. It's, it is what it, it is. To me. Yeah, it is what it is. I think people wouldn't care if no if cool kids didn't say like oh, I'm not an influencer. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. It's just people who like kids who look up to other influencers and like people who are cool. Not necessarily people who have a following, but they know are like friends with the right people and whatever. That's what makes it uncool. But I don't think it's bad. I'll say I'm an influencer. But I think if you are an influencer, it's good to kind of branch out and do other things because when you get asked what you do. It is cooler to just say, like, a DJ or... Do you know what I mean? Just have a few things to do rather than just take photos. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. I do know what you mean. Um, <laughs> <laughs> what What is your thoughts on the resale market? Obviously, that's how you funded... Yeah. I mean, the, that, beginning, the beginnings of your career. That was literally how my... How I made money back in the day. Like, I'd buy a piece of clothing. And I was, like, known for it. People would be like, oh, I've seen this on Depop somewhere. And you would. I'd buy a piece of clothing, wear it get my photo and then sell it um, for like 200 quid more. And eventually I was making like decent money off it. But then when I started making money from like posts and stuff, I don't really do it now. But I think it has died definitely nowadays. Like Supreme, you can, some of the hype stuff you can buy for retail or like 20 quid over but before, it would be like upwards of a thousand pound. I am, um, like do you remember when I tried to resell something? And... Got scammed. <laughs> The, one the only to... time I've ever tried to resell something, I literally got scammed and like, it cost me money. I was like, right, this ain't for me. What was it, the, like, the, t the Gucci Mane t-shirt or something? Yeah, like I a, a Supreme t-shirt, which cool. I was probably making about 30 quid on. Cool I lost all my money. Like, what do I say if someone says they haven't received the item? I'm like, provide the tracking. She's like, I haven't got it. <laughs> tracking? Why would I have tracking? That's ridiculous. Um, Anyway, collabs have been popular in streetwear for years. We're seeing more of them in luxury fashion. What's your opinion on fashion houses like Versace and Fendi collaborating? I think it's sick. I really like it. I think, why not, innit? Do you know what I mean? I think people get, like, angry because it's like they shouldn't be doing that or whatever. But I think it's cool. I don't really have a problem with it. I think people are just confused. Like, why would why would they be doing yeah, that? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I know what you mean. They're kind of that their own own brand. But I think nowadays, you've just got to, everyone's just doing whatever they want. Do you know what I mean? I think it's cool. Don't really hate it, but... I don't buy it, do you know what I'm saying? I don't buy it, but I don't like, hate it. Um, when you started your journey, you were the first to put your post out and the first to drops. What is your relationship with streetwear now? Because obviously you've progressed. You're yeah. not so streetwear now. I think my as my I've my like I've changed age. My my style's changed as well because being like going on twenty, I can't. <laughs> <laughs> going on twenty. 
<laughs> you know what I'm saying though? It's, di <laughs> it's different to wear like full pink tracksuits every day of the week if you're if you're becoming an adult, do you know what I mean? Like you have to kind of fix up sometimes and look a bit look a bit sharper. So I still wear, I still love Supreme, I still love tracksuits, whatever, but I think as like this outfit I would have never have worn four years ago because it, it would have looked weird in a way. Do you know what I mean? Because like, I was very small. I wish someone could see my height like compared to what I am now. Um, you were like literally like a foot smaller than me. I was smaller than, than Cora, yeah. Met. I was a foot smaller than Cora. When I first met and Cora... And over the time, I was just getting smaller. <laughs> I don't know if I was getting smaller or you was getting taller. Okay. Um, but yeah, I've definitely... My style has definitely changed. Still love streetwear, but I've just... As I've progressed, my style's progressed. Do you know what I mean? How do you think the streetwear culture's changed over the last five years? Well, People aren't obsessed with it as much, are they? What now? Yeah, yeah, not at all. I was going to say that. Like, so, do you remember what it was yeah, like? Yeah, do you back think? In the do you day? think it's because Supreme stopped letting people camp out and stuff? I think like that? camping and all that was a major thing into why streetwear was so like desired. Or like, it I was also, like a community. More. Yeah, I also do think like, influ like the bigger influencers like ASAP Mob and all that who used to wear Supreme day in day out, they don't do it anymore. Do you know what I mean? So people kind of obviously people follow that. But I think back in the day when you could camp, there was this kind of thing in people's heads where they thought it was more hype than it was just because people were waiting two days to get it. But now you get given a ticket and you go there at your time, 10 minutes, you've got your item. And there's so much more now as well compared to what there was. Like, I remember when like box logos would release and stuff, there would be like three of each color, but there's definitely more now and it's easier to get them. People have more connections. So hype just isn't there. People still like it, like buy it, whatever, but it's just not the same kind of desire to get it. Um, you've spoken a lot about online hate and bullying on social media. Do you still get that? And how do you deal with it? Uh, I, I feel like you don't get it as much now, nah, do I think you? people realise that I genuinely do not give a flying... <laughs> do you know what I mean? Because I just don't. Like, it's... <laughs> people used to be like Albino and like... Do you know what I'm saying? Just like the meanest... Not that that's a bad thing. No, not no, but I'm saying like... They used to call me every name under the sun, like it's horrible stuff. And it actually never fussed me. Sometimes I'd see it and it would be like... Like, people would be like, you're a fail to your parents, all you do is take photos. And it's like, cool, <laughs> thanks. Um, but as I literally just ignored every DM, I know it's easier said than done, because some people like, well, you've seen, like people do horrible, sad stuff over it. But for me, I genuinely just never got fussed by it. And I think people realised that over five years, commenting, you won't get a reply, you won't get a response, and it's just not worth their time. I still get the odd comment, more so recently, like, <laughs> I had it awful the other day. Um, but it just doesn't fuss me and I think you kind of notice that because people will only put energy into hating on someone if they get a response. Like on TikTok and stuff, you see people replying like shouting at their phone to hate comments and it's quite entertaining sometimes. So I think people keep just doing it and doing it but if you're getting nothing, you're putting, putting nothing in. Do you think social media platforms should be doing more to stop it? I think there's only so much you can do because you can hide, you can hide comments, like you can filter out words like horrible things but... To an extent, you can't filter out like DMs and like people who see you in the street. Because I know people who get shouted stuff in the street and you can't do anything about that because you can't like mute someone. You can't be like, please don't say that to me because you know it's coming. Um, but I think there should maybe be a bit more like, I think big things like TikTok don't really do enough like online stuff about hate and all that. I don't really see it enough and I see so much hate on that app specifically. Um, but there's only so much you can do and I think social media platforms are doing it already, but you can't avoid it, do you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. You're in the Gucci beauty campaign wearing nail varnish. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Although it's becoming increasingly common, for some people, it's still a rare thing to see. Was that a conscious and deliberate choice? Oh, I just really like wearing nail polish. I think <laughs> <laughs> people are like, oh, like, done that, like, breaking barriers and stuff. I'm just like, nah, I literally when you, just like... When you first started wearing it, everyone thought it was, like, this huge thing, and now literally everyone I know, yeah. Because remember, I did it back in, like... And <laughs> do you remember I got one black nail because I was scared? And every time I saw Cora, I was like... <laughs> <laughs> I think we went to St. Lucia. Oh was my it, God. Was I, was, it, yeah, I went to oh St. Lucia with pink toenails. And, <laughs> <laughs> just days you say, I was like, why did I do this? And, literally, and a fake tan as well. Oh my God. A spray, <laughs> a spray tan and bright pink toenails. I was, I was wondering why people might yeah, be I was looking wondering why in people... flip flops as well. Like, and then locked himself in the hotel room for the rest of the duration of the holiday. God, yeah, that was a, that was a silly, silly decision. Um, but yeah, no, I didn't do it for any reason. I didn't do it to like stand out or for people to be like, wow, I genuinely did just like it. And I know it might come across like I've done it to kind of stand out or whatever, but I've been doing it for years and then Gucci were like, do you want to do it? And I was like, of course. It literally freaks me out when you don't have nail varnish on. I know, it's weird. <laughs> on or, your like, toes. A pattern. Um, but yeah, just kind of 
It's just, it became my thing a little bit as well because people, I did get a lot of hate for that at the start, to be honest. And I, I noticed people like from my school or boys from my area who once would be like, you can imagine what they said about wearing nail polish as a boy. And now they do it. So it's like, <laughs> cool. <laughs> Uh, what's your thoughts on where genderless fashion is going? Where do you hope it will get to? I think it's cool. I think anyone should wear anything, really. Do you know what I mean? And everything's becoming unisex now. Like, brands are just making... like they, You can't really say nowadays. It's it Actually, there's kind of difficult to say that something's male... Do you know what I'm saying? Like, for men or women. Because anyone can wear anything. And there's a lot of celebrities, like Jaden Smith, was wearing skirts all the time. And I think people are just slowly realising in 2021 that it's just so stupid to, like be like, do you know what I'm saying? Comment on what people wear, what people want to do, because nowadays, just do what you want. Was there a specific moment that you realised you love fashion and wanted to use fashion to express your own unique style? Mm, I think... I, I just loved it because I could, it, I could really stand out, because people, like, a few years ago were wearing the same thing over and over again. Um, and I was just like, do you know what, this is boring, I want to do my own thing, I want to wear what I want to wear. And people really liked it and I thought it was it was cool because people would message me and be like, you've inspired me to wear what I want to wear and that was so weird but also sick and it made me keep wanting to doing it. So I think that would be it. Do you, know what do you I mean? think maybe also like being in the basement and like having that community and talking about fashion and stuff was yeah. different to talking about your friends at home yeah, I, about that, fashion? Yeah, that was quite lucky. I think that definitely pushed me and um, kind of kept me going because if, if I didn't have the basement or like my Instagram and I'd still like the clothes, like just like I did because I did, um, I definitely wouldn't have pushed with it because it would have been difficult to kind of talk to boys in my area that were just in skinny jeans and like, do you know what I'm saying? Like lived in jail, you know, that kind of thing. Um, but that's definitely a good point. I, that kind of kept me going because I had like a community of people who loved what I did and made me realise that I'm not a weirdo. <laughs> and who inspired you when you began loving fashion? Not Joey Essex. <laughs> not Joey Essex. It literally was Joey Essex, yeah, no. but it's, it's fair. <laughs> it was like... It's we a, love Joey. Yeah, we love Joey. <laughs> Joey's my guy. Um, <laughs> Probably just like, it's very like all stereotypical, but growing up, I listened to a lot of like Tyler and like Pharrell and like ASAP Rocky. And they've obviously, those are like kind of like the OG people who wore like Supreme and all that kind of thing. So seeing them really inspired me to kind of just not care. And it sounds so like what everyone else says that's into fashion, like, oh, ASAP Rocky inspired me, but he's always been dressing cool, do you know what I mean? And like that kind of thing. Um, and it was definitely as well, like the basement and my Instagram popping off, which kind of, inspired me massively to just keep going and kind of wear what I want because there's no, people don't care and there's always going to be someone out there who likes what you do, no matter what it is. And who inspires you now? I feel like those people that you've said kind of have grown as well and like their, yeah, yeah, their yeah. style has changed as well. They've so they're changed. probably still the same people. Yeah, definitely. I mean, Pharrell always dresses sick. Tyler's cool as hell now. And they're all kind of wearing much more like formal stuff, like sweater vests, which I love. But before, like back in the day when I was wearing Supreme, they'd all be wearing like pink tracksuits or pink hoodies. Um, but also just like being like around all my friends and stuff, because people, all my friends do cool stuff, own cool brands. And when they send me stuff that I didn't even know existed, that's, I just, I'm just like, that's cool, put it on and it fits. So I just wear it. Just lucky then. <laughs> <laughs> What's your thought process when you get dressed? How do you decide what to wear? And this brings me to think about when we were in Paris and we literally had a floor drobe with like chicken nuggets <laughs> oh swimming my through God. it. <laughs> and, the, and the lady from the brand had to come into our room to talk to us. We were literally mortified. Nah, if you and guys I, could, I, I, Bob's got a video of the room. It's, it's that, the most embarrassing thing. And now I'm thinking about it. I'm there, was literally a chi there was literally like a chicken nugget laying on Cora's knicker. Like, <laughs> <in the corner. laughs> <laughs> we were literally still drunk, like, nah. No, it was a bit... And you just, like, picking up, like, Gucci trousers, like, Vizage like T-shirt. Like, I'll just put this on there and it just look great. But I don't think... You don't really have a... I don't really have, like, a... People sometimes say to you, like, does it take you ages to plan them? And honestly, sometimes I'll just go into my wardrobe, look at that, look at that, look at that, put it on, doesn't fit, try something else, try something else. And a lot of the time when we'd go away, it would be like a joint effort, wouldn't it? Because I'd be like, this look good. And you'd be like, you look literally terrible. I'll take it off. Yeah. I'm like, gully guy who? <laughs> I used to do things, yeah, like wear outfits. And people, like, some of my friends would be like, it looks cool. Obviously just saying it. And I'd go to Cora and she'd be like, why are you wearing a beret? Take it yeah, off. Like, but also it might be worth talking about how your mum has literally let you take over the entire house. Oh so my God. Leo doesn't have a walk-in wardrobe. Leo has a walk-in house. <laughs> because like, it's literally like... And if you everyone. saw my room, I mean, I don't know who's been to my house here, but 
It's a box. It's a single bird and a tiny space you can kind of shuffle through. That's that's it. Yeah, so my living room is literally a walk-in wardrobe now. There's shoes everywhere. My garage has been taken over. I've got my DJ decks on the kitchen side. I feel bad. I need I need to move out. To be honest, I'm moving out of the place. You should have moved out five years ago. <laughs> every every um every opportunity. The kitchen's a DJ booth. <laughs> yeah, literally. I'll have to send you some photos. Can't insert. Hopefully, it's ridiculous. Um, but yeah, shout out Sarah. She's a real one. Sarah and Paul. They really, <laughs> really helped to help this uh, procedure. <laughs> How do you shop? God. How do? That's a- I, I mean, one. if we go shopping, it's literally like, I'll have that one, I'll yeah, have that, that one, I'll one, have that, that one. one. When we used to, be, like before Corona, we'd go away, literally every day, we'd be like, we'd, we'd designate a day to shopping, wouldn't we? Yeah, 100%. And we'd go to like, Rodeo Drive or like Paris. Because you used to be like, you know, I can if I, I can wear this and I can yeah, resell yeah, yeah. it and, you know, it's like a clever way to shop. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You're always thinking about the fact that And that's still, that's still a thing, so I think that's quite, that's really lucky to be honest. Um, but most of the time... I do just buy what I like. I don't ever buy really full outfits unless I'm going on like a night out and I'm really thinking about it. If I see something, I'll just buy it. I never think like, I'll wear this, this and this when I'm shopping. I will just buy it. Um, but there's not really a procedure, is there really? Just like what I like, I'll just take, go into you Prada. You just have whatever you want. <laughs> <laughs> uh, in every episode of this podcast, the guests will answer questions on their fashion love life. Luckily, not your real love life. <laughs> Uh, so for our final section tonight, I'm going to ask you about all of your fashion loves and flings. Okay. Tell us about your first crush. Can you remember the first piece of clothing that you really loved? And if you don't say the butterfly tracksuit, yeah, then... Yeah, I was going to say that. That was the first one. That was what made made me, basically. If it wasn't for that, I don't think it would have took off. But yeah, the butterfly tracksuit, literally, like you said. And the, talk about the, um, it's, the uh, fish video. Oh, my God. So... <laughs> the, <laughs> So this is how I knew I loved Corey and I knew she's going to be my friend. I've got a very unique sense of humour. <laughs> Some of the jokes people crack, I, I'm like, and then everyone else is laughing. Anyway, it was, this is one also thing I, I liked. It sounds very bait, but there was a Supreme North Face drop and it was like, there's like a bum bag that came around here and no one's going to laugh in the room, but you might. I think you need to reenact it though, yeah, yeah. properly. So, so can... I had, I, had um, <laughs> I, I bought this bum bag and I remember being in the basement office, I think, and I'd met Cora a couple of days. It, wasn't, it was quite recent, wasn't it? We, had, we didn't really speak I'd a lot. I'd seen you in Supreme. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, and I thought, whose child is this? <laughs> <laughs> whose child is this? Um, so, yeah, I was wearing this bum bag and I remember, I don't know who took a video, I think it was Jake, and I was going like, fish, one pound fish. No, do it properly. That's... Okay. Can I stand up? Oh, shit. I was going, one pound of fish, anyone want a fish? <laughs> <laughs> and I had this bum bag on. And, cool, and no one replied. It had like 20,000 views and like, an hour, and I remember having one reply from Cora, and it was just ha 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 for like three I, lines. I genuinely thought it was the funniest thing I've ever seen in my entire and I was life. Like, I love Cora because no one else found it funny. And I was like, I'm, I'm also messaging like a 13 year old child, so it's also a bit weird, but. <laughs> I was literally mad. <laughs> yeah, um... that's actually weird. Like, in retrospect, a bit weird. <laughs> Probably not gonna do that again. <laughs> Um, so yeah <laughs> this is very weird um, have you ever had a holiday romance is there anything you've worn while you were away and then regretted it when you came back yeah and you're going to really hardly agree with me on this one no in LA when I was going through my cardigan and old man hat phase and you hated it Corey, you, you like, literally <laughs> saw Tyler wear it once and then decided you were going to wear it every day for three months I was like can you actually just stop now <laughs> Corey used to be like Corey used to be like She's like, you're literally like a 14-year-old who's known for wearing tracksuits. Why are you wearing old man hats? Oh, yeah. It was like the quickest turnaround ever. Like, just tracksuits every day and then like a corduroy suit. I was like, <laughs> make no. it stop. <laughs> then we got back and Court was like, you actually just start with this? And I was like, yeah, I do. So that was like my holiday romance. I think that was just America, wasn't it? Or did I do it? <laughs> I'm trying to think. What, there's been a few, for sure, that um, I haven't liked. Berets you didn't like. I was doing that in... America here and there. Yeah. What else was I doing? Um, I'm trying to think. I've had questionable outfits and you've been like, what are they? I know, after after we have this, it's going to all pop into all my pop head into and I'm going to say, I yeah. wish I said that so much. But the main one is probably old man cardigans. Yeah. Um, what is the one thing that got away? Is there anything you really wanted but missed out on because it sold out? It didn't sell out, but... It's a really, really tragic story. I used to have this Louis Vuitton Chapman Brothers shirt with the animals on it. I was literally about to 
say yeah, that listen to, you. to what happened. Listen I to what happened. I was waiting to yeah, say yeah, that. This is what happened. So it didn't sell out, but it was my favorite thing in the entire I world. I think about that every day. I wore it all the time. It fit so well. Where is it? Anyway, I got battered at Chilton Firehouse. <laughs> I remember I didn't want to wear it because I was going to like a less formal event, put it behind the cloakroom at Chilton, went back the next day. I was like, is it here? And it wasn't there. No. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They said it's not there. It got taken. There. Gone. And I think, I think naming no names, naming no names, but I think the people I was in the hotel with at the time definitely did a little... Was that before or after you were sick on the carpet? <laughs> oh, my God. The way before. <laughs> <laughs> the Brit Awards. Oh, this photo. Oh, I wish we could like hologram photos in the air right now. We're gonna have to send you photos to put on the. Uh, I was the in video, Chilton Firehouse for, sure. for the Brit Award after party. Like, oh, gives me shivers. And I was like, I'm gonna be sick. I'm gonna be sick. Cora was like, get him a bucket. They were like, nah. Cora was like, you're gonna be sick on the floor then. We're in a bucket hat and a pink sunglasses, suit. Sunglasses, <laughs> a pink suit, a bandana, then, <laughs> like falling into the wardrobe and put on everything possible. And there's this photo of Cora like this. Holding my shoulder, I had a shampoo sick, glass, falling like. out my mouth onto the chill of my house floor. Um, do you have a current object of desire? What are you lusting after at the moment? <laughs> Bloody hell! <laughs> sure. Fire we were. <laughs> <laughs> um, what am I after at the moment? Hmm. Hmm. Ooh. This is the person that literally has everything, so that's why you can't think it of anything. It is difficult. Um, it was the Prada dungarees, but I got them. <laughs> <laughs> Secured. Uh, probably these Dior, these Dior loafers that have just come out, actually. They're like monogram here, but they're sold out everywhere. Not that special. Yeah, I was going to say, do you remember when Pharrell did them Chanel ones? Oh, yeah. You really, why, didn't, have... why didn't we get them? They were too expensive. They were way too expensive at the time. I would have bought them now, but then I remember, and they're really hard to find in my size because they made them in smaller sizes. Um, because they didn't really release many here. It was more like a China release, like massive, like in, over there. So those were really hard to get. I'd still buy those if they came up now. Um, and do you remember when we went to Fendi in Milan and they gave me that jacket and the thing came around the head here with the cap built in? It was a monogram. But imagine that now with Corona. Was that hungover? Yeah. <laughs> uh, well, there was, there was a, it's such a nice jacket and it had like a face guard built in and I'm thinking because of Corona. Wait, did you wear it to the show? No, they didn't give it to me. They're like, we'll send it to you in October. Right, I'll be on to them then. <laughs> Uh, what is your lifelong love? What would you never sell? And I, this is when I was going to bring up the animal print yeah. Louis Vuitton shirt. I would never have sold that if it didn't. Yeah. <sighs> so sad. Is there uh, anything you can think of that you've had for you, like since you were 14 that you haven't sold? Hmm. I've sold a lot of my stuff, haven't I? Um, what have I never sold? Do you have any of your like early like gully tracksuits that you made or anything oh, like yeah, that? Oh, yeah, yeah, I'd never sell those. When I, when I made some merchandise, I had like gully tracksuits. I've still got loads of those. I made, when I was 15, I want to say, Paolo, I, it was about the basement pop-up. Do you remember that? Yeah. And I sell, I did like a, a pop-up thing of like T-shirts with Nokia cell phone tees on. Definitely, if I did it now, I'd get a very large sheet of the with Louis Vuitton monogram print in the middle. Oh, yeah. Um, so I'd never sell those because that's like a memory and something I'm really proud of. Not now, I wouldn't make it now, but it, like, it was my first thing that ever sold out and was really special. Um, but clothes-wise, sounds really weird, but when we went to Burberry in New York, they gave me these brown cords. Mm. And oh, I've, with the I've wide ones. So, yeah, and yeah. I have the Burberry yeah, jacket yeah, yeah, still yeah. from that, yeah. And I'd never sell those because they fit amazing and nice memory as well. Well, it's been so nice to talk to you tonight, even and though I talk to you every single minute of every single day. <laughs> um, thank you, everyone, for tuning in. It's been very fun. Thank you for having I me. I can't this. wait to listen to the other episodes. Neither can so. I.